This video will include a review of the Ben and Lucy case study, case study one. Do look out for the predicted exam questions relating to this case study. They'll be out on the 26th of May. So do come back to this video and you'll find the link in the description box. In the meantime, there's a free worksheet in the description box for you to work through, which should be helpful for exam preparation. Case study one, moving abroad. Ben 35 and Lucy 33 are married with four children. Ben is an English teacher at a local secondary school earning £40,000 per annum and Lucy is a web designer for a large IT firm earning £90,000 per annum. Their children are aged 14, 10, 6 and 3. Recently, Ben, Lucy and their children went on holiday to Spain after saving to afford this. They spent three weeks in Spain and became friendly with some people that have permanently moved to Spain from England. Ben and Lucy returned to England and have decided that this is something they would like to do when they are older and have started to put a plan in place now. Ben and Lucy have an outstanding mortgage of £150,000 over a 15 year term. They have decided that they will move to Spain when their mortgage is fully repaid and this will coincide with when their youngest child is 18. Ben and Lucy are now putting together their 15 year financial plan to achieve this aspiration. Ben and Lucy have no other outstanding debts and currently have no savings either. Ben and Lucy are mature adults in the personal life cycle. They have four children and a combined household income of £130,000. They recently went on holiday to Spain where they spent three weeks and when they returned decided that they want to move to Spain permanently when they are older. Some important information here. Ben and Lucy have £150,000 left on their mortgage over a 15 year term. They want to move to Spain in 15 years when the mortgage is paid off, which will also be when their youngest child is 18 years old. At this time, Ben will be 50 years old and Lucy will be 48 and both will be middle aged. Ben and Lucy have no other debts apart from the outstanding mortgage and neither do they have any savings. Ben and Lucy have decided that they will rent their house out in the UK when their mortgage is fully paid off. Once they move to Spain, they intend to rent a house as they don't want to commit to buying in Spain until they know if they like it or not. Lucy can work for her company from anywhere in the world and Ben has been looking at the job opportunities working at English schools in Spain. They have started to research the best way to achieve their goals. Their mortgage fixed rate period has just finished with their current mortgage provider and they are researching the various types of mortgages available along with savings accounts. Ben and Lucy have calculated that they have a budget surplus and can afford an additional £400 per month from their existing budget towards this 15 year plan. Once a mortgage is paid off, Ben and Lucy intend to rent their house out as they are not ready to purchase a property in Spain as of yet. They want to take time to see if they really like to live in Spain. Lucy is currently a web designer and can work anywhere in the world in that field of work and Ben as a teacher is looking to see if he can teach at English schools in Spain. We can already see in the case study that Ben and Lucy are very much focused on the aspiration of moving to Spain in 15 years and they're putting together a financial plan and exploring job opportunities and focusing on this goal. Their mortgage fixed rate period has finished with their current mortgage provider and they're researching types of mortgages and savings accounts. Ideally, they should have researched a new mortgage provider before their current one ended. However, they are looking into it now. It is good that they are also looking into savings accounts too, as they have a household income of £130,000 and four children, and they should have an emergency fund and savings for other goals too. Ben and Lucy have a budget surplus, which means they have additional money to spend each month, which they've worked out to be £400, and they're able to put this towards their 15 year plan. The plan which entails paying off their mortgage of £150,000 and moving to Spain. It should also be noted that over the next 15 years, Ben and Lucy may have pay increases and or promotions at work, which will mean that they will have additional disposable income to put towards this 15 year plan. Ben and Lucy have both banked with Barclays for many years and their mortgage with Barclays has now reverted to a standard variable rate of 7.74% with monthly payments of £1,411 per month. They are considering whether to wait to see if the variable rate drops or whether to switch to a long-term fixed rate deal instead. Ben and Lucy have access to a Barclays rainy day saver account that pays 5.12% AER interest on balances up to £5,000 
because they have a Barclays current account and are members of its Blue Rewards scheme. Ben and Lucy like this scheme as they can earn cash back on their mortgage with Barclays at £3 per month. Ben's parents have recommended that Ben and Lucy consider the Royal London Sustainable World Investment Options in a Stocks and Shares ISA if they are considering an investment as they have seen a 300% return in the last 10 years. Ben and Lucy have had accounts with Barclays for years and the mortgage that they have with Barclays has now gone back to a standard variable rate. And this is because they did not choose another mortgage deal before their old one expired. So therefore, the interest rate is quite high and it's at 7.74%. They are considering waiting to see if the variable rate drops, which would more than likely depend on if the Bank of England decided to decrease the bank rate. Or they're looking to switch to a long-term fixed deal. The Barclays rainy day saver with an interest rate of 5.12% could be a good account to have for them to start saving as they do not have an emergency fund or any savings at all. If they were to save the £400 from their budget surplus in this Barclays rainy day saver account, then they'd be able to be given the 5.12% interest rate on their savings. But they could only save for around 12 or 13 months at that rate because it is up to balances of £5,000. The Blue Rewards Scheme would enable Ben and Lucy to earn cash back of £3 on their mortgage, which would mean that they would no longer pay £1,411 on their mortgage repayment with Barclays, but they would pay £1,408 instead. And here's some additional information on the Barclays Blue Rewards. You have to be over 18 years old, be a UK resident, have an eligible current account, which Ben and Lucy do, And you have to pay the monthly fee. So at the moment, it's £5. So Ben and Lucy are members of its Blue Reward scheme and they are paying the monthly fee. Ben's parents have suggested that Ben and Lucy consider the Royal London Sustainable World Investment Options in Stocks and Shares, ISA, which is a type of investment. This means that Ben and Lucy could invest up to £400 from their budget surplus into the stocks and shares ISA, which Ben's parents have said has given them a 300% return in recent years. This would enable Ben and Lucy to invest towards their 15 year plan. However, investments are risky and they could lose what they put in. So perhaps they could invest some of the money in the Barclays rainy day saver account that pays 5.12%. It should be noted that investment should be for the long term. So if the money was invested for a minimum of 15 years, then this would be quite ideal for Ben and Lucy, especially at a return of 300 percent. That definitely outweighs what the Barclays rainy day saver could offer at 5.12 percent. However, that is a lot safer and it all depends on their attitude to risk as well, how risk tolerant or risk averse they are. They found the performance chart below, which shows its performance. And we can see in blue, the Royal London Sustainable World Trust, that stocks and shares ISA has outperformed the mixed investment from 2012 consistently to January 2021 and beyond. Ben and Lucy are now considering their options for their budget surplus and mortgage. Research. Should I overpay my mortgage? It's a question of whether you save or whether you overpay your mortgage. Get it right and overpaying your mortgage can be a huge cash boost because you'll be eaten into the debt you've built up from buying a home, meaning you can be mortgage free sooner. You don't pay interest on the amount you overpay. The money you'd save on interest often, but not always, beats the returns possible by putting it in savings. We know that Ben and Lucy have an outstanding mortgage of £150,000 and if they decide to overpay on their mortgage repayment each month, which currently is with Barclays and is £1,411, then this means that they would be able to pay off the mortgage before the 15 years and they would have a huge cash boost. So this means that they would have additional funds to put towards their 15 year plan. But working out whether overpaying your mortgage is right for you isn't always straightforward. The first thing to do is check whether you should overpay your mortgage or save the cash elsewhere. 
Overpaying your mortgage is all about this key decision. The simple rule of thumb is key rule. If your mortgage rate is around the same or higher than your savings rate, then it makes sense to overpay. That's because when it comes to savings, the reverse isn't automatically true. A higher savings rate could be overpaying your mortgage, but it won't always. It will depend on a number of things, including whether you are planning a one-off overpayment or if you want to overpay regularly, say monthly, over the longer term, how much your mortgage debt is and how many years you have left to repay your mortgage. You can save large sums of interest by overpaying because it doesn't just get rid of the debt, it gets rid of the interest you would have to pay on that bit of borrowing in the future too. It states here, if your mortgage rate is around the same or higher than your savings rate, then it makes sense to overpay. Ben and Lucy's current mortgage rate with Barclays is 7.74% and the savings rate with Barclays Rainy Day Saver account with balances up to £5,000 is 5.12%. We can see the mortgage rate is higher, so they should consider overpaying. So pay more than the £1,411 that they are required to pay each month. It's worth knowing this isn't a question of whether overpaying your mortgage beats your current savings. It should be a question of whether overpaying beats the highest paying savings available. But before you chuck all your savings at your mortgage, it's crucial that you first check the following. Check one. Do you have other expensive debts? If so, clear those first. Check two. Can you overpay without penalty? Most can overpay 10% per year, but get it wrong and you risk thousands in fees. Check three, do you have a sufficient emergency fund? I often say it's worthwhile having a cash emergency fund for those who are debt free apart from their mortgage. But before you put all your savings at your mortgage, it's crucial that you first check the following. So let's go through these checks with Ben and Lucy. Check number one, they have no debts. Check number two, can you overpay without penalty? If you check further along in the case study, it does state for Barclays that they can overpay 10% per year but they need to check this. Check three, do you have sufficient emergency fund? We know they do not have an emergency fund. However, they will be able to save 5,000 pounds in 12 to 13 months if they saved with the Barclays rainy day saver at 5.12%. Disadvantages of overpaying on your mortgage. You'll lose access to cash. Wiping off your mortgage debt may be a big ambition, but it's important that you always have some emergency cash available. If the pandemic has shown us anything, it's that you really can't know what's around the corner. Generally, it's a good idea to have three to six months pay after tax at hand, but ideally 12 months pay. You could need it for all sorts of reasons, from unexpected house repairs to covering your living costs if you suddenly can't work for any reason. It states here that it's a good idea for individuals to have emergency cash available. This could be three to six months pay after tax. Have that at hand, but ideally 12 months pay. And this would be beneficial because unexpected house repairs might occur. Perhaps a boiler breaks down or perhaps they need to cover living costs. Or if one of the individuals suddenly can't work for any reason. So that is Lucy as a web designer or Ben as a teacher. Ben and Lucy have decided to do some research themselves and found an overpayment calculator. They entered their details and the results are your results. We've calculated that you repay around £1,411 per month. If you regularly overpay £140, we estimate that by the time you clear the mortgage, overpayment saving in interest alone, £18,160, debt cleared, two years and three months earlier. Compared to savings, you would be £6,080 worse off if you saved at 5.12% rather than overpaying the mortgage for the 12 years and nine months it would take. This is because if you save the money after this time, you would still have £36,340 to pay off the mortgage, but you'd only have £30,260 in savings, so you'd be £6,080 short of clearing it. Whereas if you had overpaid the mortgage, you'd be mortgage free. This doesn't include any early repayment fees charged by your lender.
This again illustrates that Ben and Lucy should focus on overpaying on the mortgage with Barclays as the interest rate is 7.74% and it's higher than 5.12% for the Barclays rainy day saver account. Why you might want to consider a long fix and the risks involved. The big benefit is control over your future payments. Fixing over a long period gives you budgeting certainty. You'll know exactly what your monthly payments will be over the next decade or longer. Yet there are significant downsides too. It'll be tough to get out of the mortgage if it's no longer good value in a few years time. If interest rates fall over a 10 year period, for example, you could look back at the end of your term and realize it would have been cheaper to take multiple shorter fixes. Normally, you'll need to pay an early repayment charge, ERC, if you want to ditch a fixed mortgage midterm and switch to a new one. Ben and Lucy's current Barclays Bank mortgage is a variable rate mortgage, which means it can change in line with the Bank of England's bank rate. So the £1,411 per month, which they're required to pay, would change over the lifetime of the mortgage. It may go down, it may increase. A fixed rate mortgage now would allow them to plan better and for them to know how much they would be paying each month. It would be consistent and this would help them with their 15 year plan to move to Spain and also enable them to be able to save more easily. Realistically, you should only seriously consider a long fix if you're confident you're going to be living in the property for a long time. Thinking of fixing for 10 years or longer? Speak to a broker. Where you're considering fixing a mortgage deal for a decade or longer, it's vital you speak with a mortgage broker to discuss the pros and cons, particularly in this current climate of uncertain mortgage rates. As well as advising you about the possible rates you could get, they'll be able to indicate which lenders are more likely to accept you based on your personal circumstances. Ben and Lucy are considering the following three mortgage deals as options. We have Lloyds Bank. Kensington and Barclays Bank who they're currently with. So we've got the product. For Lloyds Bank it's fixed rate mortgage and the interest rate is 4.98% fixed for 10 years. The monthly repayment is £1,179. Overpayments, yes, overpayments are allowed up to 10% without a charge. Fees, there are no fees. More information only available to current account customers with Lloyds Bank. Ben and Lucy would have to switch current account provider. There's also £250 cash back on completion. Now the Lloyds Bank option is the lowest out of all three of the providers at 4.98% for the interest rate and the monthly repayment is the lowest as well. In addition to this, it's fixed for 10 years, which could be quite good for Ben and Lucy because remember they have a 15 year plan. Now, what that means for 10 years, 10 of those years out of the 15 year plan means that they will know consistently how much they're paying each month, which is £1,179. And if they want to overpay, they can do that up to 10% without a charge. Then we have Kensington. It's a fixed rate mortgage as well as Lloyd's. The interest rate, however, is 5.79%. It's fixed for the lifetime of the mortgage. Now, earlier on in the case study, we did read that it stated realistically you should only consider a long fix if you're confident you're going to be living in the property for a long time. We know that Ben and Lucy do not intend to live in the property for a long time because after the 15 years, they intend to go and move to Spain. The monthly repayment for Kensington is £1,249. Overpayments are allowed up to 10% without a charge and there's a fee of £108 and there isn't any further information. It also says in the case study, if an individual is thinking of fixing for 10 years or longer, they should speak to a broker. Then Barclays Bank, variable rate mortgage, 7.74%, variable for the lifetime of the mortgage and the monthly repayment is the highest out of all the three, £1,411. Yes, overpayments are allowed up to 10% without a charge. There's no fees. Customers must have a personal current account with Barclays and we know that they currently do and they should be a member of the Blue Reward Scheme and have two direct debits being paid out each month. Thank you for watching this video.